this week on Way of the Master. You know, I've been to a lot of places in the past 18 years of my life on this earth, but I have to say I'm at one of my favorite places in the world today, the Creation Museum. I mean, can you believe it? An actual creation museum? Atheists and evolutionists love it. Come with me, check it out. Look who's here, the world's favorite Aussie. Easy. How you doing, Ken? Hey, it's about time you came I'm here. I'm telling you, I know. Well, let me tell it's you something. It's taken millions of years for you to get here. It was a process of evolution, but finally I made it in full form. Now, let, let me tell you this, Ken. I've been to the Creation Museum before, and I want our friends who watch the program to see it as well. So sure. can you show us around? Absolutely. All right. Let's go for a walk here and show you some really exciting things. See all these fossils here? I mean, we have real fossils oh, in glass man. cases here. The, the atheists are really upset at that. They don't want us to have real fossils. They think they own them. <laughs> it's like dinosaurs. They're right. really upset that we talk about We've dinosaurs. We've got the corner on science. Oh yeah, they think that they own the dinosaurs. They own everything. We have no right to use those for creation and yeah. for telling people the truth about God's word. But you know what we've heard over and over again? Even from, there's been some uh, you know, well-known evolutionary scientists who have come through here as well. And one of the things that we've heard back, and they've even written in their books, they mock our message and say, how ridiculous. And then they say, but one can't but admire how well done it is. And in fact, some of them are saying, wow, it's so well done, people are going to believe it. You know, yeah. <laughs> they, they don't like that. They don't right. like that we do it in such a first class professional way. No, you know, I've been to the museums in DC and Honestly, most of them can't even compare to what you have here. Oh, we have a lot of families who yeah. say, oh, we went to the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., yeah. and the kids say, but this is far better. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Show me around a little more and we'll get in Sure. There. Let's go and have a look. So let me ask you this about dinosaurs. Uh, I think that evolutionists have this perception that it's the Christian's Achilles heel that, uh, pff, come on, answer the question about how dinosaurs could have existed with man, that's impossible, right? Here's the interesting thing. If you've ever been to Ripley's Aquarium in uh, Gatlinburg, or even go to Newport Aquarium here in our right. area, you'll see living horseshoe crabs. And at the Ripley's Aquarium, they have a big sign saying, living fossils. Horseshoe crabs lived a million years, 100 million years before dinosaurs, lived with dinosaurs, and here they are living today beside us. Right. So. Here you have a creature that supposedly evolved way before dinosaurs, lived with dinosaurs, it's living today, it lived besides people, but it's silly to believe that humans and dinosaurs lived at the same time. Well, this is fascinating and great art craftsmanship. I think you told me Buddy Davis sculpted these. Yeah, Buddy sculpted uh, the dinosaurs that you see in this particular exhibit. And so the sculptures are just artistic license yeah. applied to the bones we found. The eggs, by the way, are real, real oh, fossil eggs. let's look at these. So Ken, we're looking here at Grandma Lucy. This mm. is one of the most famous supposed missing links. So but this is this is a trophy of evolutionists. It's interesting, you know, the arm bones and the leg bones were broken and of course they, they want Lucy to be human-like so they don't want Lucy to have long arms so they shorten, you know, where, where the break is, they, they shorten that length there and with the leg bones they don't want to have the short legs like an ape so they, they lengthen it and actually where you look where they're broken, the, uh, the opposite is the best fit actually. Right. And so there's many other things that we look at here and show people that overwhelmingly this is some sort of extinct ape. You know, Ken, I, I'm not exaggerating in the least bit when I say I could literally spend days in this place. And it's not just because you have things to look at, but there's so much to read. There's there, information everywhere. And I know that this is a centerpiece here. Tell us about it. Well, we're in the Biblical Authority Room, and this really sums up what the whole ministry of Answers in Genesis, the Creation Museum, the Ark Encounter, really why we exist, what it's all about. Right. You see, the attack today, the Genesis 3 attack today is particularly leveled at Genesis 1 to 11. Much of the church has succumbed and said, doesn't matter, we don't need Genesis, yeah. we can believe in millions of years, as long as you trust in Jesus. Right. But you see, 
The issue is the message of Jesus comes from a book and if you've undermined the authority of that book, that word, to coming generations, they're not going to believe the rest right. of the message. There's a lack of apologetics teaching in our churches, in our homes, right. and that's why the Lord has raised up organizations like Answers in Genesis Living Waters to be able to give that apologetics teaching so that we can equip people to be able to defend the Christian faith and answer this, the, the skeptical questions of this Amen. age. You know, Ken, we talked earlier about your parents and the foundation that they laid in your life and how really it's led to all of this. I love the fact that you've got a visual aid to help us capture that. Tell us about your favorite exhibit. Well, it's only a small exhibit, but it is my favorite. And when people stand in front of here, I want them to think of one word, legacy. Amen. What legacy are you leaving in this world? What legacy are you passing on to your children? Because this is a little Noah's Ark that my father built me many, many years ago, not knowing we'd one day build oh, wow. a life-size Ark. Here's his Bible with his notes in there. My father went to be with the Lord about 22 years ago. And really, the Ministry of Answers in Genesis, Creation Museum, the Ark Encounter is a legacy of parents who taught their children to stand boldly, uncompromisingly on the authority of the Word of God and to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what this is saying is this, that's the legacy they passed on to us. What legacy are you passing on to your children? Amen. It's no small thing to bring up a generation for the glory of God. And if your dad could have seen all this, wow, he sowed the seeds that have borne fruit. Absolutely. TV and streaming listings available at wayofthemaster.com.